The laboratory is the cornerstone of healthcare, guiding and informing patient care. This Medical Laboratory Professionals Week, we'd like to thank the men and women in the laboratory for their continued dedication to putting patients first. And we honor their commitment to helping patients one test at a time. Thankful for their unwavering commitment to patients and patient health today, tomorrow, and into the future. Hello everyone, welcome to the lab. My name is Patience, I am a medical laboratory scientist and we are celebrating Lab Week. Happy Lab Week to you, happy Lab Week to all the scientists in the world. We appreciate you for all that you do. Thank you. If you are new here, please do not forget to subscribe, hit on the bell and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much. We normally celebrate Lab Week every year, but this year we couldn't do much because of the current crisis. Part of it is the inspiration behind this video. I'm going to be taking you guys around the lab. We have different departments in the lab, and in each department, my supervisor is going to give you guys some spotlight on what we do in the lab. Today, we're going to be learning about blood bank. Without further ado, let's move to blood bank. Hi, my name is Ina Fletcher, and um, I'm the lead for the blood bank here at Piedmont Union Hospital. I have been in the medical technology field for 43 years and 40 of those were spent, have been spent working in the blood bank. Um, the blood bank basically provides service, we provide blood for patients who are going to surgery, women who are delivering babies, any kind of trauma such as a motor vehicle accident or anything of that nature we would be called on to provide blood for those individuals. We also have, um, we have different products that we offer in the blood bank. We have red cells, which um, we um, use for individuals that are just anemic, then we would provide red cells for them. If they are bleeding, we have other products such as fresh frozen plasma, which we have to thaw in a water bath over there and then provide it for the patient to stop bleeding. We also have specialized products that we use for that we give to women who are RH negative and whose husbands um, are RH positive and so the child is RH positive, we give this product to the women to prevent sensitization so that we can, they can go on to have more than one baby in this instance. Okay, patients that are bleeding sometimes, in addition to needing fresh frozen plasma, they sometimes require platelets and the product is usually kept in a bag like this and it's kept at room temperature and then it has to be kept moving so that the platelets don't clump before they get into the patient because you want them to clump and stop the bleeding inside the patient and not on our shelf. It seems like the blood banking is not all the time straightforward because there are times when we get patients who have had babies or who have had previous transfusions that get exposed to blood and so they make antibodies because um, they might have antigens that are foreign to them and so they make antibodies. When that happens, we have to do involved workup to find what the antibody is that the patient has. And we then have to make sure that whatever product, red cell product that they're getting, that product lacks the corresponding antigen because blood banking, everything has to do with antigen and antibody reaction. And the whole idea is to not have um, an antigen and an antibody being specific inside a patient's body as that results in agglutination in our tubes. We get, when we 
do the testing in our tubes. We use specialized reagents along with the patient cells, and we get these reactions that we call agglutination. We have to try to prevent that process inside the patient because that would mean that the patient cells are being destroyed. So when those instances arise where patients have antibodies, we have to provide blood that is safe for them, that won't um, involve that process of breaking down their red cells. Um, of course, blood banking here is limited in the sense that in larger blood banks, they do HLA typing, they do um, bone marrow, they, they, you know, they process bone marrow and stuff for patients and a whole lot of, whole lot of host of things that can be done in blood banking. Paternity testing is done as part of blood banking, but those things are done in larger institutions. Our facility is small, but we still do a decent amount of um, reference work per se, because I tend to do that in the blood bank, so we don't send a lot of stuff to the reference lab outside the facility. This allows us to provide um, blood for patients faster than if we had to send it out and depend on those people to work on it and send it back to us. So I think we run a title ship here, and for a small hospital, I think we provide you know, excellent service for our patients. Okay, thank you.